مسئلہ کے آلات رت پہ قائم رہو زندگی دی گئی الحمد للہ الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على سید الانبیاء والمرسلین وعلى آلہ وآصحابہ اجمعین وعلى من تبعہم بإحسان الى یوم الدین وعلینا معہم وبہم ولہم وفیہم الى یوم الدین اما بعد فاعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم أحسب الناس أن يتركوا أن يقولوا آمنا وهم لا يفتنون صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الأمين الكريم We have gathered here to commemorate the urs of Sayyidi Imam Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'a Huzur Ala Hazrat Imam Ahmad Raza Khan رضي الله تعالى عنه he was the great gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the words of the Arab ulama, he was one of the ayat from the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was a mu'jiza from the mu'jizat of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyiduna ala hazrat radiyallahu ta'ala an, no matter how much we praise, no matter how much we talk about the favors that Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala has done upon us, we may truly never be able to understand. But the great ulama who read the literature that Imam Ahmad Raza has left behind, they gain a little understanding of how great his favor upon us is. Huzur Qibla, Sabiq Sadr Mufti Jami Amjadiya Mufti Shamshad Ahmad Misbahi. He was once traveling through Gujarat for a fiqhi seminar and he came to a place in Gujarat, Dharaji, Dharaji, where the people took him to a Mazar Sharif of a Wali of Allah. He went and visited the mazar Park of this Wali of Allah and they handed him a book that was written by this Wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The book was in Gujarati. It has now been translated into Urdu. It is published, available in India. I can't remember the details, but when I do, inshallah, I may mention this again with detail and names. This Wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lived 300 years from today. So about 200 years before Ala Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala. He was a muhaddith and he was a faqih of the Hanafi madhab. He used to give dars of hadith from his madrasa, where he is laying now in his khanqa. Once whilst he was giving the dars of hadith, he was giving the dars of Bukhari Sharif and he came to a hadith regarding the ilm e ghayb of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. He mentioned the hadith and then he began delivering a commentary on the hadith proving the ilm e ghayb of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as we heard in, from the Quran Sharif just now wa kana Allahu bi kulli shay'in alima Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is knower of everything and he is the one who allamahu ma lam takun ha so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam all that he did not know, everything. Now he was delivering his speech proving that from this hadith the ilm e ghayb of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is established and he fell into unconsciousness. After he fell into unconsciousness the students became worried and then suddenly he awoke again. And he was very troubled and he was un unhappy and displeased and distressed. And then he fell unconscious again. And then after a moment he awoke again and he was now happy and pleased and they could see the happiness in his face. The students asked him that what happened? 
So now we are going back 300 years. And he said that whilst I was teaching the hadith and talking about the ilm ghaib of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I became unconscious and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired me. Ilham. Ilham occurred upon the anbiya kiram Wahi descends upon them and upon the awliya kiram it is ilham, inspiration from Allah. An inspiration came that you are delivering a lecture to prove that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had ilm ghaib but let me make you aware that in the future in the very place where you are in Hind a group of people will come who will reject the ilm ghaib for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he says, when I awoke, I was distressed upon hearing that. But then when I fell unconscious again, I was inspired. Ilham came that, but don't worry, in that time, I will send a man who will eradicate that fitna and he will prove to the world, not just him, but throughout the world, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is given ilm ghaib by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the students upon hearing this became really pleased. And the Shaykh then said that I know in such detail that if I want, I can give you his name as well. But I will not give his name. The student said, hey, Huzur, why don't you give the name? He said, shall I give you the name? They said, yes, Huzur, give us the name. He said, shall I give you the name? They said, yes, Huzur, give us the name. Four times he questioned, shall I give you the name? And then he said that his name will be Ahmad Raza. His name will be Ahmad Raza and he will be born in an area near Dilhi, which is Bareli Sharif. So Ala Hazrat Imam Ahmad Raza radiallahu ta'ala an is such a personality that he was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a mujaddid, as a reviver to revive the deen amongst the people. And as I have mentioned in various lectures before, that Allah Hazrat did not only revive Islam in the subcontinent, but Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala and revived Islam throughout the world. And it was the Arab ulama in Makkah Mukarrama and Medina Munawwara who claimed that Imam Ahmad Raza radiallahu ta'ala is a mujaddid of this time. Indians and the Pakistanis and the Bengalis, the Bangladeshis, we all recognized after it is the Arab ulama from Makkah and Medina who recognized Allah Hazrat as the Mujaddid of the time. And if you look at Fatawa Razviya, the 30 volume Fatawa of Imam Ahmad Raza radiallahu ta'ala, you will find in there the greatest scholars of Medina Munawwara and Makkah Mukarrama sending their questions to India, to Bareli Sharif to ask Allah Hazrat for guidance in the Masail. So you can understand how great Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala was. And Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala used to receive all sorts of feedback from the people. And amongst that feedback, feedback was great praise. People used to praise Allah Hazrat. They used to call him the Imam of the time. The Arab ulama used to call him the Imam al the Imam of all the Imams. And at times people used to send swear words, abuse. Verbal abuse in letters, long letters with verbal abuse, swearing at Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala. And once Sadul Afazil Allama Naimuddin Murad Abadi, one of the great students of Allah Hazrat, came with one of the letters which was full of abuse. And he said that, O oh, Imam, O oh, teacher, we should take this man to court. We should take him to court. So Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala, he went inside a room and brought back lots of letters, a pile of letters. And he said, in these letters, the people have praised me more than I deserve. First reward them, then we will think about taking these people to court. And then he said that whilst this man writes abuse towards me in this letter, it pleases me that at least at that time he is occupied in abusing me rather than Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa and he sacrificed his name for the sake of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And that is why after Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala and Bareli was regarded as Qadianis in Misr, in Jami al-Azhar, when I was studying in Jami al-Azhar, there was a book in the library of Jami al-Azhar in which it said 
that the Barelvi group from the subcontinent is fo are followers of the Qadiani Madhab. And Ma'adallah, Ala Hazrat Imam Ahmad Raza, Ahmad Raza was a student of Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani Ma'adallah, which is not possible. And these things later got eradicated and then the truth prevailed. Now, Alhamdulillah, Jamia Azhar, never mind Ala Hazrat, they recognized Huzur Taju Sharia, the great grandson of Ala Hazrat, with the Al Azhar award. So Ala Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala spent his life fighting fitna. And unfortunately, fitna is something we don't like. We don't like to talk about fitna. But the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned fitna in the Quran many a times. Because fitna has to be mentioned in order to raise awareness. When we just heard the recitation of the Quran, we heard that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is sent by Allah shahida wa mubashira wa nadira. He has been sent as a witness. He has been sent as a giver of glad tidings and good news. We can talk about the good in the world. We can talk about the good that we will receive in Jannah. The beautiful gardens and the streams of wine which is free from intoxication and milk and honey and uh, water that is sweeter than honey and whiter than milk. We can talk about them gardens and the beautiful bliss that there will be everlasting in Jannah. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was also sent as a nadir. And a nadir means one who warns people of danger. One who gives people awareness of danger and fitna. And that is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Bukhari Sharif, Sayyiduna Osama bin Zayd radiallahu ta'ala an, he says, in this hadith, Ki Ashraf al Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala utumim min atam al Madina, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam climbed upon one of the hills in the outskirts of Madina Munawwara. And then he said, gathered the people, and after gathering the people, he said to them, Atarawna ma ara. Allah, Atarawna ma ara, be aware, people, listen to me attentively. Do you see that which I see? The people said, La, inni la nara. We do not see what you see, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inni la aral fitan. Inni la aral fitan. Taqa'u khilala buyutikum kamawaki al qatar. I see kamawaki al matar. I see fitna in the future. I see fitna that will fall from the sky into your homes like the rain falls onto you. There will be fitna widespread amongst you people. And fitna will come to people. And that is why in the verse of the Quran that I mentioned in the khutbah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ahasiban nasu an yaqulu, an yutraku an yaqulu. Do people think, do people think that they will be left alone by just saying, Amanna, we have said Amanna, we have become Muslims, we have become mu'min. We have accepted Iman. You have said that so you will be left alone. No, that is not the case. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ And they think that they have accepted Iman. They are believers. They are Muslims. They are mu'min. وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ They will not be falling into fitna. They will not be tested. They will not go through trials and tribulations. Verily, without doubt, People who accept Islam, people who accept Iman, it will not be that you will be left alone like that. You will be tested. You will have to go through trials and tribulations. Listen to Surah Mulk. In the beginning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that Allah created you so that He can test you. He can take you through, through trials and tribulations, through fitna. Fitna means a trial, a hardship, a tribulation. Children of fitna. Parents of fitna, the ulama of fitna. This is what the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says. Fitnatu rajuli li ahlihi. Fitnatu rajuli li zawjatihi. Fitnatu rajuli li ulama. Fitnatu rajuli li abawai. Fitnatu rajuli li awladihi. Fitna is everywhere. It is all a test. Your parents are a fitna. Yani, do you respect them or not? It is a test. Will you respect them? Will you demean them? If you respect them, you have passed the fitna. 
Because your parents have to be respected. You have to love them. You have to obey them. If you don't obey them, you will be punished. You will fail to pass the fitna. If you respect them, obey them, love them, give them that which pleases them, you have passed and you have, you have been victorious over the fitna. Your children are a fitna. Do they occupy your time that you can't pray your namaz? Do they want you to do things that, don't, that are not allowed in the sharia? Do you do them for them, for their happiness, or do you allow them to cry? And s- s- remain steadfast upon the Sharia. That is the fitna from your children. The fitna I- also is that do you earn and provide for them? Do you give them clothing? Do you give them food? All of these things are part of the fitna that your children come with. Your wife, your marital partner, your husband, your wife, they are all fitna because you have to fulfill their rights. If you obey your husband, if you do what he asks you to do, you have passed. If you don't, you disobey him, you answer back to him. Similarly to the wife, if you don't fulfill her rights, you don't be good to her, then you are failing the fitna. You have to succeed by ensuring you fulfill the rights of others. Everything is a fitna and that is what you have to go through. And there's there's a hadith in which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah tests, yani puts that person in the most fitna, the most trials and tribulations whom he loves the most. So if you are going through hardship, then know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests those that he loves. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once said, Sayyiduna Umar radiallahu ta'ala and asked the sahaba kiram that which one from amongst you remembers the hadith of fitna? And Sayyiduna Hudayfa said, I remember the fitna, the hadith about fitna. So he said, which hadith do you remember? He said, fitnatul, fitnatul rajuli li ahlihi li malihi. Uh, I remember the hadith the Prophet ﷺ said that man will face fitna due to his wealth, his children, his wife, etc. Sayyiduna Umar said, I am not talking about that fitna. I am talking about that fitna which will flow amongst the people, my people, the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam like a tsunami, like a tsunami of water from the ocean, and it will take into it anyone who comes in front of it, before it. That fitna I am talking about, Sayyiduna Huzaifa radiallahu ta'ala and said, that, O oh Umar, why are you worried about that fitna? فَإِنَّ بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهَا بَاب There's a door between you and that fitna. Yani that fitna will not come amongst you in your time because there's a door between you and that fitna. Yani that door was Sayyiduna Umar radiallahu and himself. He was the door that held back the fitna. When he passed away, when he was martyred, the fitna began. And that fitna murdered Sayyiduna Uthman Ghani. That fitna murdered Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu an. That fitna is the fitna that killed Sayyiduna Hussein radiallahu ta'ala an. Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala an was killed by that fitna. And that fitna has continued and continued and it continues today. And it will continue until the day of judgment. And that is the fitna that Sayyiduna Ala Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala and came to fight against and aware the people of. And regarding that fitna, Ala Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala and wrote this kalam. In this kalam, Ala Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala and begins by saying, Suna jungle, Raat andheri, Chai badli kali hai. Suna jungle, Raat andheri, Chai badli kali hai. Sone walo jagte rahiyo choro ki rakhwali hai. What does that mean? So Suna jungle, Suna is a deserted place where people do not live. It's a place where nobody goes to. And it's a jungle. You're living in a jungle. The, the time that we are living in, the era that we are living in is a jungle. The fitnas that you face when you're in a jungle, the amount of preparation you have to do when you enter a jungle, that is what we need today. He says, Suna jungle, Raat andheri. It is night time, it is dark. Andheri means dark, Raat means night. Chai badli kali hai. The cloud that is overcasting you is all black. You've heard of dark gray clouds. These are black clouds. So you can imagine the environ, environment that we are living in. And this was a time when Ala Hazrat ta'ala an, in India, in the subcontinent, in Bareilly Sharif, 
was facing so many fitnas from people. There were people who were saying that the Quran is tibyanan li kulli shay. The Quran has everything in it. There is nothing missing from the Quran. We do not need any other book. We do not need any imam. Up to the extent we don't even need this man called Muhammad. Ma'azallah. He was just a postman. He came with the message from Allah. The book is from Allah. He was a postman. When a postman comes to deliver a letter to your house, you take the letter. What do you do about the postman? Ma'adallah. He gave a similitude of the Prophet Muhammad with a postman. And this is a Baqaida group of people who still exist today. They call themselves the Ahlul Quran. We are the people of the Quran. They say we don't need any hadith of Muhammad. Ma'azallah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All we need is the Quran. It has everything in it. That fitna was in the subcontinent. It is here as well today. There are people even in the UK who have this belief. They believe we only follow the Quran. We don't follow any hadith. Then there were those people who were called themselves the Ahlul Hadith. Who only believed in the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Whatever they understood from the hadith, they followed. They found a hadith. For example, they found a hadith in which the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, when you pray namaz, you, you fold your hands on your chest. Okay? So they pray namaz like that on their chest. The Shafi'is don't do that. The Shafi'is do it above Fawqa Surah, above the navel. The Hanafis below the navel. This group places them here. And they found this hadith, they follow this hadith. This is their mentality. They don't realize how much knowledge you need in order to follow the hadith. There are so many various hadith. They have to be put into each context. Which one came first? Which one came after? Which statement of the Prophet ﷺ he changed later? These type of things, who he was talking to when he mentioned this. And these people still pray namaz like this. They say this is the hadith. And you know when you look at that hadith, the hadith is regarding women. Where the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ was teaching women that when you pray namaz, you should hide your adornment. So you pray namaz like this. So these people, they just find any hadith and they just follow it. They found a hadith where the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ said, doing masa on the feet is fine. So now you find them in universities telling our young people that look in Bukhari Sharif, you don't have to do wash your feet, you can just do masa, you just wipe them, khalas. You don't have to do wash the feet. Whereas the Quran says, فغسلو, and then it says uh, your feet, including your ankles. That is the verse of the Quran. But these people found the hadith and they say that's it. But when you put the hadith in context, it's talking about when you have the khuf on, when you have the leather socks, then you can do masa, not without the leather socks. So these type of context, they don't look at. And these people call themselves the Ahlul Hadith. And they don't follow any of the Imams. Whereas the Quran tells you that when you don't know, you follow the ulama. And it is basic understanding, common sense, that you have to follow someone. You cannot go direct to the hadith. Because to go direct to the hadith, the first thing is the hadith or in Arabic. So if you pick up Bukhari Sharif, who is telling you this hadith? Imam Bukhari is telling you. So you can't go direct to the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. You have to go via the imams, the great imams who narrated the hadith to you. If you're looking at an English translation, then you are following one of the, the English translator, the one who translated it. So alhamdulillah, we follow Imam Azam Abu Hanifa who understood the hadith and he explained them to us. Then there were people who followed the British government, the British government, and this can be found in the, uh, the words of the British spy Humphrey, who's written a book he was a spy of uh, the British government and he went to the subcontinent and he uh, wrote his research that the people to break down the Muslims, the government, the British government wanted to break down the Muslims, the strength of the Muslims. And after all his research, he said that the reason why the Muslims are so, so staunch in what they believe is because they have the shuyukh, they have the shuyukh, the peer, the peer sahib, the ulama. The Khanqah, the Mazarat of the Awliya Kiram. They are so attached to these Mazarat and their Shuyukh and their Mashaykh. The only way to stop them is by breaking that bond. But that bond cannot be broken because that bond leads to the bond they have with the Messenger of Allah, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They love the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so much. So that bond through the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, these 
mashaykh are the representatives of the Prophet Sallallahu so they hold on to them so hardly. So it's these bonds that you need to break. So these people, the British government, they then funded movements. They funded movements to break down, break down that bond. And this is written by the movements them, themselves, like the Dev Bandi school. The Dev Bandi school, they have written themselves like Molana Manzur Ali in his book, and I can show you this. He has written himself that the Tablighi Jamaat used to receive funding from the British government. Molana Ashraf Ali Thanvi, one of the great scholars, he himself said that I used to receive a monthly allowance from the British government. And these type of things have been mentioned in their own books. So all these type of fitnas were arising at that time. And at that time, Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala said, Ke suna jangal, raat andheri, chai badli kali hai, sone walo jagte rahiyo choro ki rakhwali hai. What does sone wala mean? Sone wala means the one who has sona. Yani jiske paas sona ho, the person who possesses gold. Sone walo, you who has valuable valuables with you, you who has gold with you, jagte rahiyo, stay awake. Choro ki rakhwali hai. The guardians, the security of this place, ye sab chor hai. These people are thieves and robbers. Yani, the place and the environment that you are living in, everything seems like people are good, but don't be fooled. The environment is dark. The clouds are thick and black. They are full of darkness. You are surrounded by thieves, the people who are looking after the place, the security that is present there, they are all thieves. So if you have gold, then stay awake. Don't go to sleep. Because if you fall asleep, they will rob you and take away your belongings. This sona, this gold, Allah Hazrat refers to, is your iman. The iman that you have. The belief that you have in the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The love that you have for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the mashaykh. That iman in your heart, that is the gold, gold Allah Hazrat refers to. Then Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala says ke aakh se kajal saaf chura le. Aakh se kajal saaf chura le ya wo chor bala ke hai. They clean the kajal from your eyes. Aakh se kajal saaf chura na. What that means is, it's a proverb in the, Arab, in the Urdu language. That when a thief is such an expert in thieving, they say, Wo aak se kajal saaf chura leta hai. He removes the eyeliner from the eyes. The surma or the kajal that somebody has in their eyes. Imagine a thief in front of you. Is it possible for a thief to remove your surma and you don't realize? It's not possible. You wouldn't even know. How would that be possible? So Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala is saying that the thieves that I am talking about, they are such experts in thieving and robbing that aak se kajal saaf chura le. They will completely remove your eyeliner. They will completely remove the surma from your eyes. Ya wo chor bala ke hai. These thieves are those who will put you into distress and difficulty and put you into testing times. So be aware. Teri gathri taaki hai. Teri gathri taaki hai. Gathri means a bag, a bundle. Your bundle, they have got their eyes on. When you travel, you have a stick and you tie a piece of material on it in which you carry your belongings or your necessities. That is the gatri. Allah Hazrat is saying that you are in this jungle, in this darkness. These are the thieves that are guarding the place. You think they are security? They are not security. These are the thieves. And they have got their eyes on your bundle, on your belongings. And you are falling asleep. You want to go to sleep. You can't be asked worrying about it. You want to fall asleep. So teri gathri, the gathri, the bundle, is your heart. They have got their eyes on your heart, which holds your iman. They have got their eyes on that, and you want to fall asleep. Then Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala says, ke ye jo tujko bulata hai, this person who is calling you, ye jo tujko bulata hai, thag hai. Thug is in English, thug. Ye jo tujko bulata hai, this man who is calling you, he's a thug. 
تجھ کو مار ہی رکھے گا ہی ول کھل یو ہی ول مرڈر یو ہی ول لیو یو ود نتھنگ سو ڈونٹ فال پرے ہائے مسافر اعلیٰ حضرت عدی اللہ تعالیٰ سے ہائے مسافر وی آر آل ٹریولرز دا پروفیٹ محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سیٹ کن کن فی دنیا کا ان کا عابر و سبیل لیو ان دس ورلڈ از دو یو آر اے ٹریولر سو اعلیٰ حضرت سیز دیٹ دس مان ہو از کھولنگ یو لائک دی اہل قرآن ہی ہولڈ دا قرآن او پنی سیز کم ٹو دا قرآن دی اہل حدیث دے سے کم ٹو بخاری شریف لیٹس لیو آل دی ادر پیپل کم ٹو واٹ دا پروفیٹ محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سیٹ او دا دیو بندی او دا تبلیغی جماعت who knock on your door and say, come to the namaz, let's come, come and pray namaz in the masjid. Let's go, there will be a dars, we will talk about the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ala Hazrat radiyallahu anhi is saying, yeh joh tujh ko bulata hai, thag hai, maar hi rakhe ga, hai musafir, dam me na ana, hai is a cry of pain, hai is a cry, when you cry in pain, oh, oh musafir, Don't fall, pray, dam me na ana, don't fall in this trap. Mat kaisi mat wali hai? What kind of mat means your sense, your sensibility? Mat kaisi mat wali hai? What kind of sense do you have? Do you not realize that these people who appear to be the security or the gods who are looking after you, do you not realize that these are the thieves that are living amongst you? Ala Hazrat then says, ke sona paas hai. Sona paas hai. And you know, these people, the tablighis, let me ask you a question. How many times have you seen these people knocking on the door of a Shia? How many times have you seen these people knocking on the door of a Ahl, from, from amongst the Ahlul Quran or the Ahl Hadith or from amongst the people uh, who are Qadiani, for example? They don't. Why do they not? Because a thief only goes where he knows there is something there to thieve. جہاں مال ہوتا ہے وہاں نہ ڈاکہ ڈالیں گے دے نو دیٹ یہ یہاں تو ایمان ہے ہی نہیں دیر از نو ایمان امنگس دا شیاز دا اہل حدیث دا قادیانیز دے ول نوک آن یو دو اینڈ دے ٹیک یو ان دے ٹیچ یو دا سننا آف دا پروفیٹ محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم فار یئرز اینڈ وین دے ہیو کمپلیٹ ٹرسٹ ان یو دیٹس وین دے اسٹارٹ ٹیچنگ یو دا فلف دیٹ دے بلیو پیپل دیز پیپل دیر آر ٹیکن ان ٹو دیر مساجد دے آر نارمل پیپل لائک از دے ڈونٹ نو But the beliefs are held by their ulama. And I have the books. I have their books. I have them. And in their books, Ma'adallah, one of the books, Barahine Qatia, from Hifzul Iman, Tahzirul Nas, Barahine Qatia is the worst of all. In Hifzul Iman, Maulana Ashraf Ali Thanvi sahab, he compared the knowledge of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with madmen and animals. He said, what's so special about the ilm ghaib the partial knowledge of the unseen of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, knowledge, similar, knowledge like that is possessed by Zaid, Amr, Bakr, madmen, children, animals, uh, donkeys and pigs, ma'azallah. That statement, completely atrocious. Tahzirun Nas, we just heard the verse, ma kana muhammadun aba ahadim mir rijalikum walakir rasulallahi wa khataman nabiyyin. He is asked the question about the meaning of khatamun nabiyyin. We believe and the whole Ummah believes Khatamun Nabiyyin means that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's time, era is the last after all the Prophets and that there will be no Prophet after him. The Hadith confirm it. Ana Khatamun Nabiyyin wa la Nabiyya Ba'di. Khutima biya Rusul la Nabiyya Ba'di. Many Ahadith. Khatam means there is no Prophet after me. On the first page of Tahdirun Nas, I have this book. I had it in my bag. I forgot to bring it with me. First page he says, he writes this, that the general public think, assume that Khatam means that the Prophet Muhammad's era is after all the Prophets and that there is no Prophet after him. But the people with intellect know that that's not what it means. Because to come first or last in time has no speciality in it or no virtue in it. What he's saying is the word Khatam should mean the most virtuous. And to be last in time or first in time is no virtue. So he's saying that the verse Khatam does not mean the last prophet. There are other evidences to prove the prophet Muhammad is the final prophet. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the verse Khatamun Nabiin doesn't mean last prophet. Now the problem is, if you say 
this verse of the Quran doesn't mean the Prophet Muhammad is the last Prophet. There is no other verse to prove the Prophet Muhammad is the last Prophet. There is no other verse. Which means to reject that belief, you do not become a kafir. And we believe that is the verse which means anyone, any other Prophet, he's a kafir. But if you say that verse doesn't mean last Prophet, then there is no other verse. There is no staunch evidence to prove the Prophet Muhammad is the last Prophet. There are hadith, but if someone rejects them hadith, you will call him misguided. He's still a Muslim. So this is a great deceit that he has done. And in that book, after saying that Khatamun Nabiyin doesn't mean last prophet, it means the most superior prophet. After that, he writes that if we suppose a prophet was to come here in India, then it would not affect the Khatamiyyah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It wouldn't change. He would still be the Khatamun Nabiyin, Ma'azallah. But these two books, Kufr, definitely. But the third book, Barahine Qatiya, Ma'adallah al Ayadu Billah, the filth that is in that book, I was reading it. I could not believe that people, this book is still being published. The book I have is printed in Saharanpur, Dev Band. It is their book printed by them. And it is printed near to today's time. Yani it's been being published all the time. You know, in our books, in Allah Hazrat's books, there's a third part of Hadaik e Bakshish. It got published, somebody added things in, we stopped publishing it. We don't publish it anymore. We printed posters, published, publicized that the third part of Hadaik e Bakshish has these couplets in it. They are completely wrong. We do not accept them. Allah Hazrat did not write them. We don't publish it anymore. But these people are still publishing it. And in there, he has spent the whole book trying to prove that the Prophet's knowledge is less than Iblis, Shaitan, and Malikul Maut. And in there, he goes to an extent and he says, what proof is there from the Quran to prove that the Prophet Muhammad had vast amounts of knowledge which would not prove anything but shirk? Whereas the knowledge, vast knowledge for Malikul Maut and for Shaitan is proven from the Quran. Ma'azallah. And these are the things written in their books. Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala says, Ke sona paas hai. You have gold. Sona tere paas hai. You have sona. Suna ban hai. And you are living in this suna jungle, rat and dheri. Sona paas hai. Suna ban. Sona zahir hai. Uth piyare. So he's used the word sona three times. Sona paas hai. Suna ban. Sona zahir hai. Uth piyare. To go to sleep is venomous. It is poison. Don't go to sleep. You've got sona with you. You've got gold. You have iman with you. You need to stay awake. Sona paas hai. Sona ban. Sona zahir hai. Uth piyare. Tu kehta hai. Meethi neend hai. Tu kehta hai. Meethi neend hai. Teri mat hi nirani hai. He says that I am telling you to stay awake. You've got gold with you. You are in this place. To sleep is venomous. You are saying that I want to fall asleep. I'm tired. I can't be asked listening to all of this. I don't want to know about all this. I can't. My mind does not have the strength to go on understanding all this controversy. I just need to rest and relax. You're saying that sleep is sweet. Your sense, your way of thinking is completely different. Imagine yourself standing in a queue and you have 5,000 pounds in your pocket. And you are in an area like Cullen Estate. No offense. And you are standing in a queue to buy some sort of a ticket or something. You've got five grand in your pocket. Or let's say you've got 20,000 pounds in your pocket. Are you going to be worried? Are you just going to be careless and just relax? There's nothing, there's nothing wrong. Are you going to fall asleep? So you know when there's uh, the Black Friday sale or something, people spend a night outside a shop unfortunately after the dunya and they fall asleep there but if you had that type of money would you fall asleep there knowing that anyone can just thieve me because you value that money you value that worldly wealth Allah Hazrat is telling you here that never mind that worldly wealth 20,000, 50,000, a million pound nothing, nothing can be equivalent to Iman your Iman in your heart that is more valuable and more precious than any worldly wealth. And therefore, don't go to sleep. Don't be careless. Stay awake. Be careful. Don't sit and mingle with the wrong people. Because if you mingle with them, you will start to be lenient towards them. 
اعلیٰ حضرت رضی اللہ تعالیٰ دن سے اس کے آنکھیں ملنا جھنجلا پڑنا لاکھوں جمائی انگڑائی آنکھیں ملنا از وین یو رب دی آئز یو نو وین سم بڈی کمس ٹو یو اینڈ ویکس یو اپ اور یو فالنگ اسلیپ اینڈ ویکس یو اپ دیٹ ویک اپ ڈونٹ فال اسلیپ یو گاٹ گولڈ دیز پیپل آف تھیوز ویک اپ آنکھیں ملنا یو اسٹارٹ ربنگ یو آئز جھنجلا پڑنا جھنجلا پڑنا از وین یو اسٹارٹ لوکنگ ان انگ یو بیکم فیوریس وائی ہیو یو ویک ان می اپ لیٹ می اسلیپ اسٹاپ ویکنگ می اپ جھنجلا پڑنا لاکھوں جمائی انگڑائی جمائی از ٹو یون یو یون سو مینی ٹائمز نام پر اٹھنے کے لڑتا ہے اعلیٰ حضرت سے اس کے نام پر اٹھنے کے لڑتا ہے یو آر فائٹنگ اپن ویکنگ اپ وین سم ون ویکس یو اپ یو فائٹنگ ود ہم اٹھنا بھی کچھ گالی ہے از اٹ اسوے دیٹ ہی اسوور ایٹ یو ہیز ہی ابیوزڈ یو بائی ویکنگ یو اپ اٹ از ابیوز از اٹ ابیوز ٹو ویک سم بڈی اپ ٹو اویر دیم تو اعلیٰ حضرت رضی اللہ تعالیٰ ان سیز دیٹ دس از دا مینٹالٹی آف آر پیپل وین یو ٹیل دیم دیٹ بی اویر آف دیز تبلیگیز بی اویر آف دیز شیاز اسٹے اوے فرام دیم ڈونٹ لسن ٹو وٹ دے سی یو سی دیٹ یو اسٹارٹ آرگوئنگ ود دیم یو اسٹارٹ شاؤٹنگ ایٹ دیم یو اسٹارٹ ٹیلنگ دیم دیٹ آئی کانٹ بی آس ود آل آف دس اسٹاپ ٹیلنگ می آل دس ٹائم یو نو دا امام صاحب ان دا مسجد وین یو ٹیلز یو پیپل سی دیٹ دس از دی اونلی تھنگ ہی نوز all the time this is what he says but let me tell you there is a hadith in which rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said idha zahara al fitan wa lam yuz wa lam yuzhir al alim ilmahu fa alayhi la'natullah wal malaika when fitna rises amongst the people and the alim of the deen does not aware the people and express his knowledge to tell the people of the fitna and make them aware then the la'nat of allah and the malaika is upon that alim So that alim is not good. You know, our people say, Ke this Maulana is good. Look at him. All the time, namaz paro, jhoot se bacho, ghibat se bacho. He talks about uh, wedding and nikah, the rights of women, the rights of men. He talks about all these things. And he doesn't talk about controversial things. This is a good imam. And an imam who stands up and awares the people that stay away from this fitna. These people are a fitna. These people who are saying this, this belief is incorrect. Stay away from that fitna. We say that, yeah, imam, he's a fitin, he's a fasadi. This is what the situation we are in. But let me tell you that if you go to the doctor because you have an illness, and you go to the doctor and you tell the doctor that I have this illness, and the doctor looks at you, tests you, scans you, whatever he has to do, and then he says, Um, take these tablets, do this, do that, stay away from these harmful foods, you will be fine. And you go away and you start taking these tablets, you, you stay away from the bad, you don't eat uh, oily foods and the, the curries and all sorts of things that are harmful, you stop them. And then after a few months you come back and you say that, look, I've been doing this, but it's gone worse. He looks at you again, he tells you again that, look, stay away from these things, abstain this, abstain from that. such and such. He gives him a diet. He goes and follows it. After one year passes by, he decides to go to a hospital. And at the hospital, after the checkup, the doctor says that, do you not know you are on the last stage of cancer? And he says, how is that possible? He says, have you not uh, complained about this before? He says, yes, I have. I went to my doctor. But my doctor said, stay away from this, eat this, stay away from that, eat this. and you'll be fine. He didn't aware me of the actual illness. And then that illness kills the person. It's too late now. If the doctor tells him then, or the hospital that has told him then, it's too late. And that is the same situation with an Ali Medin, when a fitna rises and he doesn't say anything, he doesn't say anything, he doesn't say anything, then your children have now started going to the wrong place, and the Iman has now become compromised, then the Imam stands up, And he says, Ke ye fitna hai, this is wrong. Your children that have gone there, bring them back. It's too late. It's too late. That doctor who did not tell you, you can take him to court and you can compensate him for a great amount of money, millions of pounds, but what is it worth? It's nothing, you're going to die now. But an alim, a maulana who doesn't tell the people of the fitna and he remains quiet and he hides the fitna from you, what about that? Who takes that imam into account? 
we instead praise that imam, that that imam is good, he doesn't talk about these fitna. The imam who tells you about the fitna, he is the one who wants good for you. That is the type of iman you should favor. That is the type of imam you should like to have. Because he protects you and he protects your family. Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala says, Ke jugnu chamke, patta kharke, muj tanha ka dil dharke. Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala says, Ke jugnu chamke, jugnu is like a glowworm or a firefly. Anyone seen a glowworm or a firefly? It lights up like the beeping light of a mobile phone. The jugnu chamke, patta kharke, and the leaves rustle, the sound of the leaves rustle. Muj tanha ka dil dharke. Me on my own, I have no supporter. Everybody has left me that this Maulana is always talking about these things. Muj tanha ka dil dharke. My heart comes to a thud and it stops on this noise of the leaves rustling or the jugnu lighting up. Dar samjaye, my fear. Dar samjaye, koi pavan hai. The, the fear tries to calm me by saying that it must be a, a wind, a wind that is passing by. Ya agya betali hai. Then I think that, oh, is it an evil spirit? Is it a jinn? What is it? I get worried. Yani Allah Hazrat Adi Allah Ta'ala is saying that I am so alone. Nobody wants to support me. Nobody wants to help me. Because they think that if I side with him, people will say, this guy is a fitna as well. This is all he talks about. This is, he's also a fitna. So nobody wants to side with me. I am on my own, alone. He says, Badal garje, bijli chamke, dhak se kaleja ho jaye. Badal garje, the clouds thunder. Bijli chamke, the lightning flashes. Dhak se kaleja ho jaye. My heart stops in fear. Ban me ghata ki bhayanak surat. Kaisi kali kali hai? The face of the ghata, the clouds and the environment is so dark and black. Kaisi kali kali hai? He says, pao utha, my foot lifted. He says, I lift my feet in order to go to work for the deen, to stop the people from falling into fitna. He says, pao utha or thokar khai. My pa, my, I lifted my leg to walk. Thokar khai, I stumbled. I hit something. Kuch sambhala. I balanced a little. Then I fell on my face. I fell on my face. Mean means rain. It's made the surface slippy. Or Durtak means till half of my body. Yani, there is a ditch there which is full of sui, su, uh, the filth from the sewers and gutters, and it is full of it all the way till half of my body. And I have fallen into that. Yani, what Allah Hazrat is saying is that no matter how much I try to stop these people for, from falling into fitna, this is my situation. I stand up and I have hope. I go towards protecting the deen and protecting the people from fitna. And somehow I stumble and I fall into this. Yani, it's our own people that are causing this. It's our own people. Hum, hamari kashti vaha dubi jaha pani kam tha. Our boat sunk there where there was less water. The boat sinks where there's more water. Why is my boat sinking where there's less water? Because the people who are against me are my own people. The people within my boat are the ones that are, the ones that are thieves and robbers. Allah Hazrat then says, okay, those people who are going towards this leniency, towards these wrong deviant sects, he says, Sati, sati, keh ke pukaru. Sati, sati, keh ke pukaru. Sati ho to jawab I call them that, oh my friend, oh my friend, come. Then Allah Hazrat says that if he's a friend, only then he would reply. But these people are not friends. These people are not friends. He says, Phir junjlakar sarde patku. He says, then I move my face in anger and uh, afsos, distress, failure. Sarde patku, I, I strike my head. And strike, sarde patakna means to... Uh, bang the head on the floor or on a wall. Yani, unfortunately, this is the situation. I call upon them that, oh my friend, oh my friend, don't go there, come. But if he's a friend, then he would reply to me. Then I just shake my head and I uh, strike my head and say, Chal re mo, chal re mola wali hai. Chal re mola wali hai. 
Let's leave, let's go. Never mind, Allah is the one who will look after me. I am alone, people are not listening to me. Chalre Mola Wali hai. Doesn't matter, I have tried my best. Allah will look after me. Then he says, Phir phir kar har janib dekhu. Phir phir kar, roaming, moving from one place to another. I go all these different places. Har janib dekhu. I look towards every place. I look around. I look for some help. Koi aas na paas kahi. Koi aas. Aas means hope. There is no hope. Pass meaning nearby. There is no hope nearby. Anywhere I can find. I look around everywhere. I go in all these directions, but I cannot find any help. He says, Ha, ek tuti aas ne hare ji se rapakat pali hai. Ha, ek tuti aas ne hare ji se rapakat pali hai. Ek tuti aas, a broken hope. I have one broken hope. That is the only support I have. And that broken hope and my failed heart, hare ji, which means a failed heart, they have both become friends now. The failed heart and the broken hope, they have both become friends, and that is all I have. Then he says, looking at towards Medina Munawwara, he says, Ki Ya Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, this is the status I am in. This is the status of the ummah. Tum to chand Arab ke ho pyare. Tum to chand, you are the moon, Arab ke, the moon of the Arab world. Tum to ajam ke suraj ho. You are the sun of the whole world. Yani the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is aware of everything. Like the sun and the moon sees all the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa more than that. At all times, he is aware of all. Tum to chand arab ke ho pyare, tum to ajam ke suraj ho. Dekho mujh be kaspar shabne kaisi aafat dahi hai. He says, dekho mujh be kaspar. Ya Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, look at me. Look at me. Bekas, I have no helper, no supporter. Shabne, the night, the shab, the darkness. The, this darkness is the darkness of misguidance. This darkness of misguidance has put me in such distress and such difficulty and hardship. Then Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala says, Ki dunya ko tu kya jane? Dunya ko tu kya jane? Bis ki ghat hai. Harrafa. Biski ghat. Biski ghat means a venomous person, a malicious person. It's a saying in the Urdu language. Yani zahrila admi. A poisonous person. Dunya ko tu kya jane? What would you know about the world? You know, people say that you're living in a bubble. Come out and see the world. Allah Hazrat says, Dunya ko tu kya jane? You think you know the world? Dunya dekhi bhali hai. I have seen enough of the world. I know what goes on in the world. And Allah Hazrat was a man who was an expert in all fields. You know, it says, uh, one of the statements of our ulama, maybe of Imam Abu Hanifa, Laysa anallahi bi mustankarin al alama fi wahidin. It is not impossible for Allah to gather the whole world in one man. And, and that is an example of Imam Ahmad Raza radiallahu anhu. Other great pious predecessors were of that status and Allah Hazrat was one of them. So he says, Dunya ko tu kya jane? Ye biski gaat hai. Harrafa. Harrafa is a conniving, a cunning person. A person who cons, a con man. So Allah Hazrat says that this dunya that you are saying that you need to see the world, this dunya is like a venomous person, a malicious person. It is like a con man. Surat dekho zalim ki. To kaisi bholi bhali hai. Surat dekho zalim ki, when you look at the, the face of this zalim, this transgressor that you think is, is one that is doing good towards you, kaisi bholi bhali hai, so innocent, and like a child who has never sinned, you know when they knock on your door, when they knock on your door, imama, dhari, jubba, they come like this, and Huzur Muhaddis Kabir usually says that nobody will come to you and say, that I have come to cause fitna. They will come to you and say, I have come to take you to the masjid. Nobody will come to say that I have come to make you gumrah. I have come to uh, engage, engage your heart with the love of the Prophet Muhammad Nobody will come and say to you that I've come to you to remove the iman that you have in your heart. He will come to you and say that I have come 
I have come to fill your heart with Iman. And this is the situation. And who doesn't remember? Shaitan, Iblis. Remember when Sayyiduna Adam salam was in Jannah? We are all from Jannah. We are all the children of Sayyiduna Adam. We are all from Jannah and we will all return to Jannah, inshallah. When Sayyiduna Adam salam was in Jannah, Iblis came. And when Iblis came, the Quran says, وَقَاسَمَهُمَا he took a qasam by the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He took a qasam and he said to them, Ke inni lakuma, inni lakuma, I am for you, min al nasihin. I am one who advises good. When Iblis came to Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam, he said, I am a good person. I have come to give you guidance of good. And he, sa- he said to them that you'll become from amongst the malakain if you eat from this tree. If you eat the fruit from this tree, I swear by Allah, I am a nasih. I have come from Allah. I have come to give you good advice. If you eat from this fruit, you will be, become from amongst the malakain, from the angels. You will become an angel. You will live in Jannah forever. Eat from this fruit. Why did Allah forbid it? Allah forbid it. It was just khilaf e awla. Yani it is better not to do. I swear by Allah, eat from this fruit. Sayyida Hawa radiallahu anha, because of his oath upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at that time nobody had sinned besides shaitan, Iblis. And sin was not widespread. But Iblis is so conniving and so uh, cunning that this is what he did and this is what these people did. And this is why Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala says, Ke shahad dikhaye. In ki surat bholi bali hoti hai. They, are, they, they look like innocent people. Allah Hazrat says, Shahad dikhaye, zahar pilaye. They show you shahad, honey. They show you honey, and when it comes to drinking it, zahar pilaye. Shahad dikhaye, zahar pilaye. Qatil dain shahar kush. They are like the murderer. Qatil. Dain is a witch, an evil woman, a malicious woman. These people, they are like murderers, they are like the evil, malicious woman, like a witch. Shahar Kush, they are like the woman who kills a husband, who murders a husband, unrightfully. Is murdar pe kya lal chaya, dunya dekhi bhali hai. Is murdar pe kya lal chaya, why are you falling uh, prey to this dunya, this murdar dunya? This dunya is a sijunul mu'min, this worldly pleasures and this worldly wealth is nothing. Don't be eager to attain it. He says, dunya dekhi bhali hai. This world, we have seen what the truth of this world is. We have seen what happens in this world. Then Allah Hazrat says about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, talking to the people now, ke wo to nihayat sasta soda bech rahe hai jannat ka. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ke inna Allah hashtara min al mu'minina anfusahum wa ammalahum. Hana, bi anna lahum al jannah. That indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bought, kharidna, to buy a transaction, has bought from the believers, bought from the believers their a'mal and themselves, their lives. Bi anna lahum al jannah in exchange of jannah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this, this verse of the Qur'an was revealed, the sabab nuzul of this verse is that the, the, those who accepted Iman in Makkah Mukarramah, and again it comes back to the beginning what I was saying, that people think you accept Iman and then that's it. That's not the case. You will be tested. You will be taken through trials and tribulations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this verse, that those people who are successful in these uh, trials and tribulations, who have migrated to Medina, you will have to migrate. Doesn't mean you've accepted Iman. You will have to migrate to Medina. You will have to go through hardship, go through jihad, and you will have to go through all these struggles and all these hardships. And then if you succeed in all of that, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bought your lives and your amwal, your amal, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you Jannah in exchange. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa when Sayyiduna Ukasha radiallahu an, he asked, Ke ya Rasulullah, make dua that I become from amongst those people who enter Jannah without hisab and kitab. And the Prophet Muhammad said, Anta minhum, go, you are from amongst them. 
gave them Jannah just like that. Hana. When a Sahabi prepared the water for the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, for ablution, and the Prophet وسلم, said, Who placed this water for my ablution here? Who did this service to me? The Sahabi Sayyiduna Rabia Rabi ibn, uh, what is it? Rabi ibn Kaab al Aslami, radiallahu ta'ala. He said that I did, Ya Rasulullah. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, became so pleased at his service, he said, Ask for whatever you want. Ask for whatever you want. And that's why Allah Hazrat says, Nobody can say this, ask for whatever you want. Only he who has everything to give can say this. He is the one who is truthfully saying this, that ask for whatever you want. And he said, I want to be with you in Jannah. I want to be with you in Jannah. And the Prophet Muhammad said, okay, I've given you that. Is there anything else you want? So, Allah Hazrat Adi Allah Ta'ala says, Wo to nihayat sasta soda bech rahe hai jannat ka. Hum muflis kya mol chukaye, apna haat hi khali hai. That that was Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He could show ma'ajizat, he could give jannah to whoever he want. He used to touch somebody's heart, his chest, he was a non-believer. Chamak tut se pa hai sab paane wale. Mera dil bhi chamka de chamkaane wale. He just placed his heart on this non-believer. And his heart became full with Iman. The times we are living in near the day of judgment is the time of fitna near qiyamat. We don't have anything to give in exchange. How can we tell these people that look, come back, come here. This is the true way to Jannah. Then Allah Hazrat the, the second to last, uh, the last share and then there's the makta. Oh, this is the Makta. Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala. And then in, in his humility says, Ke mawla tere afwo karam ho. Mere gawah safai ke. Mere gawah safai ke. My witnesses. What? Afwo karam. Afwo and karam are my witnesses of my innocence. Yani, O oh Allah, mawla afwo karam ho. Be merciful. Be forgiving, forgive my mistakes, forgive my sins. Then this forgiveness and this mercy will be my witnesses on the day of judgment that I have no sin. After they have been forgiven. Varna raza se chor pe teri. Otherwise, a thief like raza, he is saying this in humility. And this is not the thieving of iman. This is the thieving in action, in amal. Like someone who prays namaz goes into ruku, stands up straight away, goes into sajda, stands up straight away. He is thieving in namaz. You should pray namaz with calmness. Hana? With stopping in each position for a moment, at least for one tasbih, which is wajib. So Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala says, Varna, otherwise, Ya Allah, if you don't forgive me and your mercy is not there for me, Varna raza se chor pe teri, digri to ikbali hai. Otherwise, the evidence you have against Raza on the day of judgment is iqbali. Iqbali means by confession. Iqbal karna, yani to confess. Yani you don't need any evidence when the person confesses to the sin. So otherwise, Ya Allah, on the day of judgment, the evidence you have is that I confess to all my wrongdoings, all my sins. So Ya Allah, forgive me, forgive my sins. I have tried as much as I could for the mission that you sent me. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the tawfiq to learn from the advice that Allah Hazrat radiallahu ta'ala has given us, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the tawfiq to protect our iman, Amen. to stay away from those companies which can deviate us from the correct path that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa has given to us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our iman, give us life on this iman, and when it is the time of our demise, then may we die with iman on the maslak that Imam Ahmad Raza radiallahu ta'ala gave us. Jazakumullah khair.